1 Samuel 26 minutes and 23 seconds to 25 KJV the Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. Behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David, thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. The Bible says, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm, not excluding the ones that are the apples of his eyes, whom he watches over them jealously. Yet some people out of reckless abandon cross the red line, thereby incurring God's wrath. Wiping away their inheritance, Psalms 105 to 14 to 15 KJV, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Saying, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Deuteronomy 30 to 9 to 10 KJV for the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he cupped him as the apple of his eye. Every master or boss anywhere and everywhere desire faithful servants. The unfaithful ones are usually sidelined and go unrewarded. The faithful ones are special to them, gets promoted as at when due and highly remunerated. David in the above scriptures obeyed the commandments of God by not touching his anointed or killing Saul when he had the opportunity. His eyes did not grow dim, his eyes 
did not go dim. Neither did Joseph take a good bite of his master's wife when she was making a demand for sex with him. These people demonstrated faithfulness to God's commandments through obedience and did not go unrewarded. So shall it be for you too and for me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we just pray? I'm sure others will join us as we move on. Our Father and our God, we bless your holy name. We thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you have in mind to do today. We appreciate you for the miracle of sleeping and waking. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for energy. We thank you for making it possible for us to be at this meeting at this time. Thank you for all your people that are here present. Father, bless them like never before today in Jesus' name. How faithful are you to God's statutes and instructions, whichever way? You will not go unrewarded. For whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Enjoy your weekend. A.O.D. We come against all activities of extraneous spirits in this meeting with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The topic we are speaking on today is, you, have, you must have seen it on my system, which is, how faithful are you? How faithful are you and me? How faithful am I? Can I be trusted with riches? Can I be trusted with secret information somebody is divulging to me for me not to divulge it to somebody else? Can I be trusted with the secrets of people that I know without going to the press, to the public, to make it known? Can I be trusted with God to obey his commandments? Can I be trusted with God to entrust me with riches and I will not go crazy? I will not begin to misbehave. I will not begin to misjive. You know, God is always afraid of, I've shared it before and I'm sharing it again, of blessing some people because he knows that once he blesses them, they will lose their mind. They will begin to misbehave. If they were not drinking alcohol, they begin to drink champagne because there's so much blessing all around them. You know, some get promoted, they become arrogant. You can no longer talk to them, they are no longer approachable. How faithful are you? You know, to let you know that those who steal, those who steal, even including armed robbers, who go about robbing people and say, I don't am they don't they will, the same bank they went to rob, they will go and keep it in another bank at their own share of the loot. They will go and keep it in another bank. That's how much they know that their own colleagues are not faithful. They are thieves, they are rogues. They will say, Ah, this is my share, take my share, keep it for me. I'll come back and collect it next week. He knows that when he comes back, he won't collect it. So he will take that same money that is his share. He will take it to the bank and say, bank, I trust you. Keep that money. The same bank they went to rob. How faithful are you? Can you be trusted with your friend's wife when your friend is not around, when he has traveled? Can you be trusted with your friend's children when your friend say, please, I'm going out, I'll be back in the evening, and you will not ill-treat those children? You know, somebody said, thieves are so, so in their nature, they are thieves. You say, okay, this is an egg, give him an egg, say, hold this for me. He knows that you have entrusted him with the egg, so when he comes back, he's not going to ask anybody for the egg, except you that he has given that egg, please keep this egg for me. And because of their nature as thieves, <laughs> because they know they cannot eat the egg and they cannot lie about the egg, 
that they have been entrusted with, they will take the egg and begin to just lick the shell because they cannot eat it. It's already in their care. But if it was not in their care, they can please steal it and take it away. So how faithful are you? Remember the story of Joseph. Joseph in the book of Bible, Genesis, when his master had entrusted everything with him and said, ah, everything in this house just handled except myself and my wife. And he was handled because the man realized that because of the presence of Joseph in his house, in him, because of the presence of Joseph in his house, God was blessing. I'm sure because of your presence in your place of work, that place of work will begin to receive advancement. Because of your presence in your church, in any institution, that because of your presence, God will begin to bless that place in the name of Jesus. Because of your presence in a neighborhood, peace will return to that neighborhood because of you. Armed robbers will not have entrance into that place. Evil doers will not have, be able to encroach into the place because of you. So, he entrusted the, 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 the entire house unto him. And of course, you know what? You know the story. If I keep telling you now, that it will take a long time because I have some scriptures to read for you. And you know my tradition? I always give you preamble so that when I read the scripture, you know what I'm saying, and you can also go back and verify the scriptures I'm reading to you. So he said, the wife one day said to him, hey, come, come and sleep with me. I, I love you. You have good physique. You have good body. Come and sleep with me. My husband is not around. Nobody is around. <laughs> that guy said, no, I can't do that. I cannot, I cannot be unfaithful to God who has used your husband to entrust everything in this house into my hand, except you. He did not entrust you into my hand. He didn't say I should look after you. He didn't say I should have sex with you. He didn't say I should do and undo. No, 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 he didn't entrust you, except everything in the house. I cannot do that. She said, no, you must lie with me. Eventually, after pulling the guy's clothes for so long, the guy had to take off his clothes and ran out of the house. How many men today can do that without having a good bite of that woman, knowing fully well that the husband is very busy outside, he won't be back until night, and it's just 10 o'clock in the morning. They can have fun till about for three hours without the husband coming back. And how would the husband know? After all, the wife will not tell the husband. And they will not only do it once, they will make it a daily habit of intercourse, of disaster, of, of abomination against the Lord. But Joseph was faithful to the commandments of God. He said, you must not commit adultery, and thou shalt not touch another man's wife. So he was faithful to it. How faithful are you? I'm sure some people might not be able to trust themselves, say, hey, I don't know how I'm going to react when such situation arises in my life. Well, you better begin to know now, because it's not, it might not come in that form of appearance. It might come in another form entirely. And before you know it, you are falling. May you not fall. May you not be a victim of such distasteful, sinful act in the name of Jesus. Because the reason is very simple. People think they were there. We are enjoying ourselves. We, just, we had fun. Oh, I had good time with her. He had good time with me and all that. But they have entered into what you call a hellhole of life that might linger for their lifetime, except God have mercy on them. They have entered into captivity, into bondage. They have locked themselves in, locked themselves in into that captivity. We had the enemy who say, well, they have sinned. God, they have sinned. <laughs> they have slept with another man's husband. They have slept with another man's wife. I have every right over them. I can do and undo with them. I can even take their lives. 
because they have broken your law, Lord. They are not faithful to you. That's what happens when you break such laws, when you are unfaithful at that level. So Joseph ran away. If, it had, if he had not run away, Joseph would not have gotten to that pinnacle of that height of becoming the Prime Minister of Egypt. So you might need to run away for some things to preserve your faithfulness in order that you can fulfill destiny. 10, 15 minutes of sex can lock you up into a bondage of 20 years. 10, 15 minutes of sex into a bondage. Oh, let's quickly do it. Let's do it. Let's quickly. Nobody's seen us. Nobody's seen us. A bondage of 20 years. 15 minutes of sin can lock somebody up into punishment for 20 years. So, how faithful are you? Are you faithful? Can somebody trust you with his money and say, oh, please keep this money for me. And when I come back, or help me go and give this money to somebody, and you go there and or quickly deliver it without coming back with some stories and say, this is what happened. The story of those who are faithful are highly rewarded. I will read some scriptures for you. Everyone that is faithful. I said it in my post. It's coming up tomorrow, but you are the first beneficiary of this message. You have a boss, and every time he gives you an assignment, you execute it with precision. You do it excellently well. You are faithful with whatever errands he sends you, whatever job he assigns to you. You are always doing it excellently well. I'm sure you know when it's time for promotion, you will be among the first he will promote. When it's time for rewarding, you'll be among the first to be rewarded, whether financially, materially, otherwise, you'll be among the first to be rewarded. But to the unfaithful servant, you know what happens. They even transfer them to lower levels. They downgrade them, they sideline them, they put them on one spot. So faithfulness is a very, very important aspect of one's, every man's life. Faithfulness. Some people are, you know, I, I don't know how some people get to do it. They just keep pouring aspersions on dignitaries. Dignitaries, especially the anointed ones of God. Just keep pouring all kinds of venom on them. I will read it for you also. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. I remember one guy was uh, was somewhere, and the soldiers wanted to assault him on the road, somewhere in my city. Years back, about six soldiers, he just shouted on them, said, "Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm." That's what God says. All the six soldiers applied the brakes immediately. They could not touch him. He, he shouted the scripture. They wanted to assault him because of traffic driving issue. He said, touch not my anointed. Stop that. He beat the, the hands that they were raised up, some of the hands could not even come down. Eventually he prayed for them and the, the hands came down and they left without touching him. But they wanted to assault him. <laughs> How faithful are you? It is in your faithfulness that your reward comes. If you have some health challenge and you go to the pharmacist or to the medical personnel and say, okay, take these drugs in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night for three days. I'm sure you know you must be faithful with that instruction. Otherwise, the ailment in the body will not go. You must be faithful. Take two in the morning. I've given this example before last year. Two in the afternoon, one in the night. Or 3 a.m., take two. 
this following morning, 12 hours after take, you know, they give you instruction. And they tell you, you must follow strictly the instruction. If you don't follow the instruction, the, med, 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 the medicine that is supposed to work in your body will not work. So you take the tablets and you carry out the instruction of the medical personnel or practitioner as he has prescribed it to you in faithfulness. Because you want your ailment in your body to go. That's exactly how life should be. How faithful are you? Oh, I like the physique of the guy. I just want to have a bite. I want him to enter into me. That's how some women will tell you, just like uh, Potiphar's wife did to Joseph. Discipline yourself. Those who are not able to discipline themselves, the resultant reward or consequences of not able to discipline themselves will discipline their lives tomorrow by force. So voluntarily discipline yourself, check yourself, restrain yourself, apply the brakes before you unzip your, 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 your pants and begin to enter into every hole here and there. Uh, these people, they are, they are just always speaking holy. They don't know that uh, sex is good. We love sex. Ah. Go to the graveyard. So many people have died of sex. Illicit sex. Because of what they contracted from it. And because of that sinful nature of going into that act, God did not allow them to recover. Some are in jail because they went to have sex with minors. They are pedophilias because they could not control themselves. Some have been killed because they went to sleep with somebody else's wife. The tenant came and just killed the landlord. Discipline yourself. You must be faithful. God says don't commit adultery, don't commit fornication. I'm sure you know sexual intercourse is blood, is blood interaction. Blood touches blood. So the spirit of whoever you have had that sex with enters into you because blood has touched blood and the other spirit also enters into the other person. If witchcraft is in the spirit of that woman or man, it will enter into that man straight. If mental illness is there, it will also enter. Because blood has taught blood. So, sexual sin is one of the most common sins across the globe. That's why I'm taking time to emphasize more on it. So, please pardon me if you think I'm insulting you by telling you not to go into sexual immorality. Please, you have to pardon me. But that's, that's, that's the advice from up. That's the instruction I've been able to, I was instructed to give to you. This is for your good. Anyway. Let's read the, the, the first Samuel chapter 26, verses 23 to 25. Hallelujah. 23 to 25. 23 says, The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. The Lord renders to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. What does that mean? Whatever you have sown is what qualifies you to receive from God. If you have been faithful, you will render you with your faithfulness. If you have been righteous, which you know the meaning of righteousness, obedience, holiness, he will render you the same reward of obedience, the word of reward of righteousness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. But I will not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. That was David talking to Saul. When Saul was going all over the place, wanted to kill David. Because he knew that David was going to succeed him. David had been anointed king to replace him. And, but he didn't want David to do that. He wanted Jonathan, his son, to, to replace him. But can anyone work against God? 
No, nobody can work against God. <laughs> that means nobody can work against the interest of God in your life. Hallelujah. Nobody. Underlined. No, no devil, no demon. No witch, no wizard. He said, let them gather against you. They shall surely be scattered because of you. And because they are not gathering with the approval of God, they will be scattered. That means they will, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will fight themselves. I remember I, I, I shared it last week. I want to quickly share it again. So, Mom Drogas, when I was, many years ago, many, many years ago, when I was living in a solitary place, people wanted to come to my house, we were about 30 of them. Mom Drogas. They got to, uh, around uh, my house there by the gate, there was a mango tree there. They, God did not even allow them to come near my gate. <laughs> he didn't allow them to come near my gate. They were by the, uh, under the mango tree there. And they started shouting against one another. They started fighting one another. They went into fisticuffs right in front of my house. Eventually, they fight for themselves and just walked away. That's how God will protect you. He will shield you from all you. And I woke up in the night and that was the end of the matter. Because God is faithful. If God is faithful to you, protecting you, keeping you from all evils of the day and the night, and shielding you from all these sicknesses and diseases, shouldn't you also be faithful? Shouldn't you also be faithful? For instance, he said, in your going out, in your company, you shall be blessed. In your going out and coming in. You know the danger of going out and coming in. He said, he said you shall, he didn't say even we before you, he didn't say you be accidental. Yeah, 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 of him. His What's faithfulness up? protects you to and fro. So, Why shouldn't you reciprocate his faithfulness to him by simply obeying his commandments? So, David said, had the opportunity to kill Saul right in this scripture I'm reading to you. He said, I cannot kill you because you are the anointed of God. God was the one that appointed you as king over Israel. So who am I to kill the anointed one? That's why he has been looking for opportunity to kill David. David did not reciprocate. That's why the scripture is very apt. He said, vengeance is mine. Somebody is hurting your life. Somebody is bringing disaster your way. And you have the opportunity to pull that person down and destroy the person. He you know, said, no, I won't do that. I will hand you over to God. I follow you, you follow me back, or else I will unfollow you. I follow you, That's I why you see a lot of people, when they hurt them, you hear that, I forgive you, I forgive you. I forgive you means I've handed you over to God. I've handed you over to God. Let God handle you. And when God handles them, you are the one that will be feeling sorry for them. You will, you will be begging God, please, it's enough, it's enough. This punishment you are giving this man who wanted to kill me is enough. He said, I cannot I, kill the anointed I, one of God. Obeying his commandments, touch not my anointed and do my prophets more. So don't take, go, don't go for vengeance. He has hurt you, he has taken your boyfriend, he has taken your girlfriend, just let them go. I'm sure you know people fight over such things and they begin to hurt themselves. Don't fight over it. Hand it over to God. Let God take it over. Touch not. Verse 24 says, And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes. You said your life was, I could have killed you. You said that. But I didn't do that. I will not do that because I'll be walking against God's commandment that touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Are you faithful enough not to touch the so-called enemy that has been working and orchestrating against your destiny for so long, against that witch or wizard? You know, if you kill that wizard... Addendum kindly press the middle paragraph twice, it will stop for you to read after reading press. Once it will continue to the next page and repeat saying till you finish reading things. Has been attacking you. It's not provable because it's spiritual. 
So what do you do? By prayer and supplication, you hand it over to God. You let God take it over. And what God will do, no law enforcement can come and arrest God and say, you killed that woman.